But one of the biggest differences that I always say from college to the league is you have to think more and think less at the same time. <laughs> and so the reason I say that is because you have to think more because there's different reads that you have versus when you're in college. When you're in college, you have your plays, you have your set, and everything's kind of more uniform. Of course, coaches want you to be able to, you know, play, you know, play loose, play free, but it's like, okay, you have to set a screen here, you cut here, you cut here. In the league, there's just so much different reads outside of what you're used to in college. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. Are you ready? What's going on, family? And welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show, where uh, if this is your first time listening, here on this show, what we dive into is podcast news, podcast how-tos, uh, and, and also interviews, right? So uh, I'm excited to, to be here with you today because we have another phenomenal guest. And we're not going to waste any time. We're just going to go ahead. And, we're just going to go ahead and dive in. Going to go ahead and dive in. And and I, I have the opportunity just, just to interview uh, this this amazing individual, Miss Erica McCall. <laughs> Did the last <laughs> name perfectly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I had 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 to put a little, had to put a little spice on it. I had to put a little spice on it. And you know, uh, I I just I I just want to just give like a little brief snippet of you, and I'm gonna kick it to you, and then let you just roll uh, with with it from there. But, uh, you know, just just talking resume and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of basketball. And, you know, you you've you've been, you know, been to two final fours. Big deal. Right. You've been to three elite eights. Major deal. And and then three Pac-12 championships. So now I'm, I'm just going to kick to you and let you do what you want to do with with the with the intro after that. That's on you. You got it. <laughs> All right. What's up, everyone? This is Erica McCall, originally from Bakersfield, California, born and raised. Um, Cali kid, always. I went to Stanford University. I got my Stanford T on right now. If anyone's watching, <laughs> out here representing my, my teams in the Final Four, so I always got to represent. Uh, went to Stanford University. Uh, graduated 2017 with a degree in psychology. Like you mentioned, I went to two Final Fours. Um, my freshman and senior year, got drafted by the Indiana Fever um, 2017, played there for three years um, until where I played with Atlanta for three weeks and then Minnesota for the rest of that bubble season and just finished off my first year playing in DC. So I'm a fifth year veteran in this league, blessed to still be here, blessed to be able to do what I love every single day. And right now I'm currently out here in Istanbul, Turkey, playing overseas ball, also my fifth year playing overseas ball. So it's a blessing. I'm, I'm happy to be here and thank you for having me. Yeah, de definitely. Definitely. So you so you said you studied psychology. Like what right. what was the reason like why you made to because I, I studied psychology as well undergrad. <laughs> but what, what was what, what was your reasoning for you to, you know, take take that path? My reasoning is always very silly. Um, so I really should have majored in communications because I'm all about media. Um, being in front of the camera, I love I love all that. So I definitely should have majored in that. Um, however, I was just telling a friend that uh, <laughs> I failed my first uh, midterm uh, for my communications class, which allowed me to like, I was like scrambling to like pass the class. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stray away from this, it's messing up my grades. So I went back to psychology. <laughs> Um, cause I had went, I took a, a psych class and I wasn't really feeling that first. So I went back to psychology, um, ended up, found it pretty interesting and really enjoyed it. Um, so, I mean, it was a great major. I just always felt as though, um, for what I am and encouraged in life right now, I think communications would have been a better major for me, but love psych, super interesting, uh, major learned a lot about it. Um, you can learn a lot about yourself with psychology, a lot about people. So that's why I loved it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. It, it, it makes sense. It, it makes sense. It all, it all makes sense. So, okay, so you, 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 you majored in, you know, you got, got the degree in psychology, but you said you should have been in communications. Now, talk a little bit more about that. Why, why should you have been in communications now, knowing what you know and just where you are, just in life? Yeah. So as I've realized where my path is and what I want to do after ball, I realized that I love being in front of the camera. I love hosting. I love just interacting with people. I love being an entertainer. And uh, I always felt like that was my calling. Even when I was young, I used to like perform in front of my family and 
make my own songs up and just, I was just a very entertaining kid. And so I realized that this is the path that I wanted to, to do after ball. Um, and so that's why I, I feel, I realized I should have major communication. I could have got a lot more understanding of what the field of the media field is like, just be able to understand the ins and outs of media, of, of entertainment, of journalism. Um, so I just, I feel like I would have been better suited with that major, but Hey, we do everything for a reason. I got my psych degree, so <laughs> uh, I'm still being able to, to, I don't say that I use it too much, but I can, you know, be able to interpret different atmospheres and, and how people, I wouldn't say how people live, but just how people behave. It's, it's pretty cool that you can use your psych degree to be able to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I learned something like that in one class, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I mean, like, like with you going through the class and you, you know, studying, studying what you studied. I'm, I'm sure it's one of those things. It's kind of like when you're working out in the gym by yourself, and then you're like, I can't see the results. I can't see the results. Yeah. Might see a little bit of definition, yes. but then somebody else sees you like, oh, you, you're getting a little, you're exactly. getting a little buff. You're getting a little, you know, <laughs> you know. So I think, like, I think it's one of those things, just just being in the thick of it. But I mean, I still think that's dope in, in itself because having having that understanding of psychology. And then in communication, it just with, with with the connection of people and you know that that all all, all uh, I think it's kind of I was about to say all encompassing, but I don't want to I don't want to use that incorrectly. So we'll just yeah. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so okay, so we're talking about communication. Let let's let's just go ahead and talk about your podcast. Let, let's 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 go ahead and just just, just, just talk about the podcast because I I mean I want to I just want to hear like. How did how this came about? You know, because we, we got we got the Bird's Eye View podcast. Right. Why did this Why did this become a thing? We, I want I want I want the tea. Give me the tea. The tea. <laughs> okay, so uh, originally about mm, three four years ago, I had a podcast called Birds of Word Podcast. Um, it was about pop culture, uh, news, entertainment, media, all that good stuff. Um, so. I started that podcast because I really enjoyed podcasts um, overseas. I had nothing to do really. <laughs> I always went on walks and stuff and I had a, I didn't have a car. So I was walking to and from practice. I was always walking. So I discovered podcasts. I'm like, okay, I want something, something I want to start myself. Um, so I started that podcast Birds of Work and it was just really hard to maintain. Um, I was doing it overseas, which was really hard. The connections overseas are tough. I was trying to record. I had a co-host, a co-host was my best friend. So I was trying to record. I'm in Hungary, she's in the States, and then I got a guest in, you know, another part of, you know, of the country. And so that was just really difficult to be able to maintain. Plus, um, I found out, like, it wasn't really, like, a passion that I was, I wasn't talking about anything passionate for me. Like, I was talking about, like, shade room topics or in music that I wasn't really listening to. So it wasn't something that, like, I really enjoyed doing. And, like, it was tough, too. I was doing everything. I'm sure maybe, you know, like, as a beginner podcast, like, I was doing the, I was doing the intro, I was finding the content, I was doing the interviewing, and I was editing. And editing sucks. <laughs> so I was doing all that. And so it just really sucked the fun out of that. So fast forward, long story. <laughs> fast forward. Um, I was thinking about doing a podcast again, but I was like, if I want to do a podcast, it got to be something I'm passionate about, something I love to talk about. And um, overseas, basketball came to mind. Um, it's something, it's a very novel topic that not a lot of people know about. Um, it's something that I know, know very well. I've, you know, I played this game for years and, and, and been overseas and played overseas ball for five years. And so I was like, yeah, this is something that I think people would love to hear about because everyone knows us as WMA, WNBA players, but they don't know our experiences when we go overseas or know what we have to go through the ins and outs, you know, what, what our, what our lives are like, not just basketball, but everything like the food, the culture, coaches, um, all that good stuff. And so I was like, I'm going to start a podcast on that. And that's how the idea started, and it's been pretty darn successful. A lot of the W fans and basketball fans have appreciated it because they get to hear from their favorite athletes, you know, and, and hear like what their lives are like eight months out of the season from from the WNBA season. So that's what Bird's Eye View is all about. Um, just bringing in, you know, like I said, the Bird's Eye View. My nickname is Bird. Bringing the Bird's Eye View um, to what you know our lives are like in this overseas world. <laughs> Erica McCall, Erica McCall. All right. So, <laughs> what would you say? And and then we're 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 definitely going to talk about overseas in just a little bit because I want to hear like just some of the comparisons between WNBA and, and overseas, and just I want you to break down because I know there's levels and tiers to overseas 
and the listeners may not know that as of yet, but we're, we're going to help them out today, Erica. We're gonna All help right. Them out today. <laughs> Sounds uh, good. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I want to hear like, what, what's the, like, what's the big vision for the, for the podcast or for you and media? I, I, I want to, I want to dig in a little bit. I <laughs> yeah. For me, I mean, the podcast, I want the podcast to be as big as, big as, as it can be, you know, I want it to spread across the masses. Um, for me, I've, I've struggled with because, um, in order for you know your podcast to get bigger and to reach more people, a lot of people have suggested bringing men into my podcast um, because you know it'll expand the, the audience and you know get different perspectives of what the men's side is all about. Um, but for me, I, I really enjoy my core audience. I really enjoy how it's just a podcast dedicated to women. Um, our sport is already you know <laughs> we already get a minimal amount of respect. Um, so I was like you know I want I want to keep it in the family. I want to keep uh, keep it women, um, keep it the WNBA and, and, you know, people that play overseas basketball. And so um, my goal is to be able to just educate the masses, get as big as possible. Um, and for my podcast to be able to lead me to other things in my life, in my future, my ultimate goal is to have my own talk show. Um, and so I, I'm hoping that this this podcast brings me great experience for that. Um, being able to interview people, being able to interact with them, entertain also the listeners. And so with that, I'm hoping that the podcast, you know, gets world with now reviews <laughs> i know it's big dreams but i know i have the capabilities in order to to entertain the world so um, that's what the podcast is all about right now yeah I'm, I'm i mean i'm here for it i mean this this is the space this is a safe space for big dreams <laughs> you know we welcome big dreams and we cancel out limitations so i mean i'm i'm all here for it and i and I really love the fact that, like you said, it's it's really geared toward your core audience. Yes. And I'm I'm a firm believer that, you know, having a thousand engaged listeners versus having a hundred thousand streams or listens is is way better because yeah. you you get the the people are engaged, you get to talk to the people, you can shout the people out, yes. they appreciate it and they'll tell other people. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm here for it all <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't think, I don't think men are necessary. You didn't ask me, but I don't think. Men are <laughs> yeah, you know, don't yeah. Think. You know, I appreciate the men's perspective, but I think we just have stories that are untold in the on the side of the women's world. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta amplify my women's voices. You know, my my women friends out there. So that's what my goal is to amplify and to spread these stories that no one else are hearing. Yeah. And, and I mean, even 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 so, so amplifying the voices and even March Madness, what the past two years has shown us with, you know, showing just by if, you know, if we took a, a like a, a way of measuring it just in terms of like the followers across social media and seeing, you know, that the women's tournament is excelling over the men's in terms of like viewership and in terms of like follower engagement type deal. So, I mean. Some, something's happening. The uprise is the uprise is happening. So yeah. you know, I'm, I'm I'm here for it. Yeah. Yeah. If you put us on TV, people will watch. You know, if you you put our stories out there, people will listen. So <laughs> it's all about visibility. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's de definitely, definitely. I'm 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 with you. I'm with you on that. What What would you say? What would you say? You feel could could increase the visibility or what would you say that like somebody in, in, in my spot could do to advocate in that way? Uh, big thing is just educating yourself on, on women's sports, advocating for it, being an advocate. Um, many people out there don't respect our game. And so when they hear somebody, you know, that they do know, you know, talking about women's basketball, you know, their ears perk up. And so um, that's the biggest thing for me. I mean, just small level, uh, just being an advocate of women's sports, amplifying it and you know your own social media or talking about it you know hyping it up yourself with that it's you know it seems minimal but you know there's I had a coach uh Poppy Chapman she was used to say there's there's no little things you know so um yeah that's what I would suggest spoken like spoken like a true coach because you know coach <laughs> It's all about the D. You, you make the cut you're supposed to make the cut right here at the first hash Absolutely. instead of okay anyway <laughs> <laughs> So, so can you, can you, can you just break down for us a little bit, like for one WNBA versus overseas, like yeah. where, where, where can, can you just, can you just split some hairs a little bit just, just to bring yeah. a little bit of clarity. So we're all on the same page. Absolutely. So, um, 
the reason why most people, at least most WNBA players, go to play overseas uh, is because of the inf income differences. So um, we're getting paid a percentage more. Like for me, I make two times more than what I make in the league. Um, and plus the league, we only play for four months out of the year. So if you want to make a steady income, you know, you got to go out and continue to do something else. And so that's why most of us go play overseas because we make the majority of our income um, with uh, the income that they're providing for us out there. Uh, stark differences <laughs> when it comes to playing overseas. One is you're away from home. It's a completely different atmosphere, a completely different environment. We're out here listening to languages we know nothing about. The food is different, the people are different, the culture is different, the coaching is different. It's just completely different experiences that we have to go through. Um, another difference is the basketball, basketball self. You know, a lot of people think basketball is basketball, but that's not true. <laughs> overseas basketball is, it's different. It depends on the position. For me, I always find that overseas basketball is a lot more physical um just because the refs let you bang more out here um and it's it's known to that you know foreigners don't like americans or the, the refs don't like americans <laughs> so they let you they let they let you know the foreigners bang on you a little bit more than what you would get back in the states so that's always my mindset i think uh the WBA, you have to um, read a lot more you have to be more your, your basketball iq has to be higher when you play in the league um, just because there's different reads, you have to see um, the way that the game flows. It's, it's different from when you're overseas. Overseas, you might just be able to go out there and play um, and just ball and just do what you do. But overseas, I mean, in, over in WNBA, your mindset's got to be different. It's got to be more about the details. You know, we're watching film more, we're breaking things down more in the, uh, in the WNBA as opposed to overseas. Depends on the team. My team, we rarely watch film. We rarely break down anything. We rarely have a scout report. In the league, we got scout report every game papers flipping, you know, stats, numbers, all that. And so those are just big main differences for me. I can go on and on and on about the differences, but those are some of the main ones out there. Yeah. And, and then, and then in terms of like, in terms of like playing, playing college ball and then now elevating and then, you know, playing at the highest level, like where do you think, let me let me get this let me get this question out clear because I because I know a lot a lot of times people debate the passion of you know playing in a professional league versus like the college sport. So right. would you say where, where where do you think do you think that's accurate? Is that accurate? What what, what what's your thoughts on it? Because you're you know you you in the league. <laughs> so you're asking what the differences are between college and, and the pros. Yeah, well, let, yeah, let's go there. So you did it much better than me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> so coming in from uh, coming in from college, like, and it's tough. Like, uh, I'm thinking about the girls that are about to get drafted right now. Like, I literally had ten days in between getting drafted, going to training camp, to training camp, two weeks, two and a half weeks of training camp to the season starts. So you you go from being a college <laughs> athlete to being a pro, playing your first pro game within a month. It's fast. It's a really quick adjustment that you have to make. Some struggle with it. I struggle with it myself. Some some are able to adapt easily. You know, those are people like, you know, rookie of the year, Alicia Gray. She was the rookie of the year, you know, uh, in my class. And she was actually class after me, but she was absolutely phenomenal. She just, her, the way that she read the game, the way she played the game, it was an easy adjustment. But one of the biggest differences that I always say from college to the league is you have to think more and think less at the same time. <laughs> and so the reason I say that is because you have to think more because there's different reads that you have versus when you're in college. When you're in college, you have your plays, you have your set, and everything's kind of more uniform. Of course, coaches want you to be able to, you know, play, you know, play loose, play free, but it's like, okay, you have set a screen here, you cut here, you cut here. In the league, there's just so much different reads outside of what you're used to in college um, that <laughs> that is difficult. But the reason why you have to think less is because if you think too much with, the, it's really simple once you get the hang of it <laughs> in the pros. The, every pro team runs essentially the same plays. We all run the same thing. So once you figure it out, it's really simple. But it's difficult because in college, you're, you, 
you learn to play a certain way. And then when you get to a pros, it's a completely different thing. So it's like you're thinking more, thinking about all this, but you can't think too much because it's really a simple game. And if you think too much, it's tough. And it's really hard to adjust to. I don't know if anyone's understanding what I'm saying, <laughs> but that's always the adjustment. That was hard for me initially. Of course, you're playing against bigger, taller, faster women than what you're used to as well. I went from playing no one taller than, I mean, I played a couple of six, seven girls, but that's rare to like almost in, you know, every game I'm playing against Sylvia Fowles, you know, Brittany Griner, you know, just, you know, centers like that, um, that are just completely different from your used to. And I was getting Liz Cambage. I remember I got her one time and she didn't even, she didn't even see me. She just bared me in the paint. <laughs> and so those are the stark differences from playing in the league. And it's just, it's, it's, it's tough to adjust to. Um, and another big difference is the, the culture. The culture is different, especially if you play in a SEC team, an ACC team where you got private jets. Like I play in a Pac-12 team. We weren't privileged like that. We, we flew economy just like the league. So I was used to that. <laughs> but if you have your own, you know, you have your own private jets, like you get treated like a celebrity. If you play in the SEC, like I, I hear stories about all my teammates, you know, that, that I have now and they, they get treated like, you know, they, they got their own dorms. They, they, you know, food gave to given to them, you know, they get a certain check and stuff. Like we wouldn't get nothing at Stanford. We were humbled at Stanford. <laughs> and then, so when you come to the league, it's like a completely different experience. You find economy, you know, you got to go out and get your own food. You know, the apartments may not be as, as grand as you're used to. You get a smaller scale of fans. You know, I'm thinking about Mississippi State, you know, they got tens and thousands of people watching their games. You might only get a couple thousand, you know, if you go to a game, <laughs> you know, uh, thinking of like a, a game like with the Atlanta Dream who has like a smaller gym. You know, and so it's just completely different. The culture's different and it's an adjustment and it's an adjustment for everything. So I'm talking a lot. I'm gonna let you speak. <laughs> no, you're, you're good. I mean, I'm, I'm listening because uh, a, a lot of this, uh, well, the, the, the first thing I heard you really just say when you were saying you have to think less, you have to think more, but think less, you have to think more, but think less at the same time. Yes, I think that's yes. what you said. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and, and and hearing hearing that, it, it does make sense because- like at the end of the day, you you take a ball and then the goal is to get it in the hoop, right? You take yes. a ball and you get it in the hoop. That's that's simplified. But then it's like, you know, we start overthinking all of these things. And I think that that can apply to people with life and podcasts and everything else. Like we began to put different barriers in our way that we have to think around and think through. And that just complicates everything. So that that definitely that definitely makes sense. Yeah, it, it, definitely, it, make, it, make, it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so think, thinking about like after you just you just drew the parallel between like you know college and and the league. What, do you, what what's your thoughts on on NIL now? Like looking and seeing like what what what's your thoughts? And then what advice would you give to a we'll say a sophomore student athlete? Yeah, sure. Um, my thoughts are I'm jealous of them. I wish I was getting paid, <laughs> wish I was getting paid when I was in college and being able to, uh, just embrace, you know, the Erica McCall brand, being able for brands, uh, different brands to be able to contact me. I think that would have been pretty darn dope. Um, and I'm, but I'm super excited for these, for these athletes, for them to be able to finally get compensation, you know, for their brand and what they do for the school, because back then, you know, we was kind of like working like slaves, you know, <laughs> it's like we put in all this work and we don't get compensated for it, you know, like how professional athletes do. And so I'm very happy that these student athletes be, get to appreciate that and get to have, you know, all the benefits that come with that. And then advice that I would give a student athlete their sophomore year, you know, with NIL, when, when people ask me this question, my biggest thing is just to be you because that's what these brands want. They want you, they don't want anyone else. They don't want, you know, different qualities that you think that you need and like no they reaching out to you because of who you are and what you do so stay true to you and always stay true to what you do what you bring to life what you bring to your sport and you know if you remember that i mean i think you'll be pretty darn successful yeah 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 i mean i think that's strong <clears throat> i think that's really strong just seeing you know some of these athletes who who have just that just they've embraced just what you said uh yes. from you know the the young gentleman with the mustache 
uh to you know just di different athletes that, that we've seen with you know whatever other products so yeah, yeah i mean it, it makes sense it, it definitely definitely makes sense so we're, we're gonna we're gonna get ready to gonna get ready to land this plane in just a second but but before we dive into to our rapid fire uh section i like to call this or that i, I want to ask you this who's who's one podcaster or what's one podcast that you feel is slept on and more people need to know about so i listen to this podcast it's called the pregame podcast it's a podcast um based out of indiana it's four guys giving their opinions on pop culture media um news entertainment sports i'm, I'm copying what they say it's my favorite podcast um it's actually a podcast that i got into um, that inspired me to get into podcasts and they actually i had a teammate um, victoria vivians she invited me because she knew i was wanting to start getting into podcasts and she invited me to a taping um and so i got to sit in and see what they do and i was like y'all this is crazy this is cool and i ended up just being like one of their biggest fans and so it's called the pre-game podcast like i said four guys um some some guys are more conservative than the others some guys just speak what's on their mind and i think that's it's, it's beautiful because when you get that raw unedited content you know <laughs> you get to really hear people's opinions and you get to really hear like sometimes there's like people out there who like really think how these guys think, but they're afraid to say it. And when you hear somebody else say it, you're like, man, it's like finally somebody, you know, who's thinking like how I think. And so it's pretty cool. They get to hear their different uh, opinions on, on all different types of stuff. I think it's absolutely hilarious. So it's called the pregame podcast. Um, look them up on Instagram, Apple, Spotify, all that good stuff. Um, shout out to my guys. Yeah, they're really dope yeah cool 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 all right well we're gonna get ready to gonna get ready to dive in do, do this rapid fire uh right. segment um uh, before before we do it i'm just gonna give a shout out to i'm wearing this community shirt and this is representing uh the morning meetup this is a group of entrepreneurs who meet every monday through friday uh and you know it's just it's 79 dollars a month to join the morning meetup so you know so we can learn and grow and expand our minds but just a shout out to the morning meetup. I guess that was a quick ad. I guess. Woo. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so, so here we here we go. Here we go. Are you ready, Erica? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Popcorn or candy? Candy. Okay. 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 Open floor or in the paint? Open floor. I'm a runner, for sure. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. Fair enough. Summer or fall? Summer, all the way. Beaches or mountains? <sighs> really neither. I don't really like to be going outside. <laughs> if I had to choose, it's less exercise going on the beach. So <laughs> I'll say the beach. <laughs> okay. Audiobooks or podcasts? Podcasts for sure. Absolutely. Popeyes or Chick fil A? Popeyes. Popeyes. Yeah, yeah. Chicken is better there for sure. Okay, 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 okay. Offense or defense? Defense. I love blocking shots. Gives me energy, gives the team energy. I love that. Fresh Prince or Bel Air? Fresh Prince, you know, I haven't seen Bel Air yet, so I can't give an <laughs> honest opinion on it. But I've, I, from the, the podcast I listen to, um, they hype up Bel Air, so I got to check it out. And that, there it is. See, that, that, there it is. There it is. And Bel Air, I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you nothing. I'm not going to get no spoilers, but it's it's a very interesting twist. It's a very, it, 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 it's, it's, it's interesting in a good way, not necessarily like the Space Jam twist. But uh, you know, I, I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing against LeBron. I don't have nothing against Space Jam. I know that Space Jam was not for you know maybe our generation. I think it was for you know this other I generation. Took my, I took my little sister to go see it. She enjoyed it. So <laughs> yeah, that's what, it's, that's what it's about. That, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Oh, okay. Let me let me ask you this question. This is just this is just off off the wall, and then I'm gonna let okay. you you know just share where people can find you and follow you and connect and everything like that. But um, who who would be a dream guest for your podcast? Diana Tarazi. I was just telling my, my, my new social media manager, I would love to have Diana on. The stories that she has from Russia. I've actually listened to a podcast with her and Sue Bird um, talking about their experience in Russia when they had the, the owner of their team was killed because he was in the Russian mafia. 
Um, so I know they just have crazy stories. I just want to get her input on it, um, be able to break down her experience more of, of the overseas game. And she's a goat. So her, uh, Dana would be, you know, amazing guest to have on the podcast. I'm working on that. Oh, um, that's dope. Yeah, that's super dope. That's super dope. And please let, let, let everybody know where they can find you, how they can follow you and, and how they can connect with you as well. Absolutely. You can find me everywhere on Instagram, on Twitter, um, at birds the word underscore 24. My name's Erica McCall with the C. That's it. E R I C A. <laughs> so you can find me. Um, and you can follow the podcast, uh, birds eye view dot pod. Um, you can find us on Instagram. I'm about to get us to Twitter and TikTok. We're about to take over this next season, season two coming out um, next month. Um, be looking out for new episodes and new content coming out. I'm super excited. So, yes, everyone, check that out. There it is. There it is. There it is. And I, I also want to. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna kick it to you in just just one second. I'm gonna do this this other promo, but. I want you just to get ready for the final word, like whatever you want to leave with the people, whatever that thing might be. So you gonna, I'm gonna come to you in just just one second. Okay. Um, for all my speakers out there, all my speakers out there, all my speakers, all my coaches, uh, the consultants out there, if you're in a spot where you're tired of sliding in people's DMs and you're trying to figure out how you can establish your authority, you're trying to figure out how you can grow and how you can ultimately expand your business, well, you need to go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com and sign up for our free training. Because there, I'm going to show you how you can learn to explode your leads. I'm going to show you how you can turn your voice into a profitable business and then stop speaking for free and start charging a fee. So go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com and I will see you in the training. Erica, now to you for your final word for the people. Final word for the people, everyone. Follow your dreams, follow your passions. Um, it's beautiful when you get to live them out and do what you love, um, even if you don't get paid for it. I, if I didn't get paid doing basketball, I would still be doing it right now. So everyone follow what you love to do. And um, life is beautiful when you do that. There it is. There it is. You all heard it straight from the one, the only, Erica McCall. <laughs> there it is. Right here on, on the Your Podcast Mentor Show. Uh, where we help you establish your platform so that you can profit on purpose from your podcast. Until next time, peace and God bless.